Uh, so this is a build submitted by uh, Triax. I don't know what levels it is, so we'll have to figure that out. I also don't know what this does. And the notes are, so I wanted to try and do a dark melee dark apostate, and frankly, I couldn't come up with any good ideas, so I went with a very bad one. Okay, so this is a melee dark apostate with charisma as its focus. It has warlock and favorite soul. It's a dragonborn, and I'm assuming that is 12 levels of dark apostate here. So that's interesting. I don't love 11 and 13 strength and wisdom, especially with the tomes, but I guess maybe items will make it come down in the wash. I don't know why you wouldn't go with 10 Wisdom and 14 Strength, um, which gives you, like, the same amount of stats, which seems better. So we will see. Um, so this Cleric takes Animal Domain, which is interesting, and Single Weapon Fighting. So I don't know what weapon we're using. Um, apparently we're using Knight's Training. So I don't know where you get critical stats on this character, so that already might be a problem. Um, because Animal Domain does not give critical threat multi and range. But with only 12 Cleric, you don't get that either. So this character is likely going to have pretty abysmal melee damage. Which is unfortunate. Uh, or like physical damage. Um, because losing one critical multi is... Like losing a crit multi on a 19 or 20 is not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. But losing a whole crit multi on every crit with a high crit weapon like a longsword is going to be a rough, rough sell. Um, let's see what else we got here. So we've got Enlightened Spirit with the Spiritual Retribution. Reminder, this is changing, right? So this is changing next patch. So this won't work with Dark Apostate at the same time. You'll have to pick Enlightened Spirit or Dark Apostate. Um, so I don't know how you would decide between those two things in terms of the imbue dice. Also, you're going to be able to pick up more imbued dice out of War Soul if you want it as well. I don't know if that is something that you're thinking about. Or just out of, not War Soul, but um, yeah, some of the other trees. So that's also another thing. Uh, it unset the T5. Well, I'm assuming you probably took the crit. Up the bonus light damage in ES for the Dark Apostate imbue. Yeah, let's say hypothetically... The Dark Apostate imbue and the uh, Spiritual Retribution imbue will basically be the same. So you won't need this at all. So you'd basically just be using this for the aura, for the extra defensive cap capability. And with the aura pulsing every four seconds, you get your constitution. You won't get anything other than that. And like I said, this character's damage is going to be low because you don't get the critical threat range and multi. So this makes me wonder if you would need that at all, or if you just focus on the apostate dice maybe or focus on just like getting the added damage onto here but i say that but then you give up a bunch of dice up here so this is a tougher one yeah it also triggers on the aura and also on the eldritch burst which is true which is very true so you could keep that but then you would just have to take this anyway and just use the light damage imbue which is the same spell power scaling which is probably fine um, this character could also very easily wear medium armor, so I don't know why you wouldn't. Is there rogue in here? No, you can definitely wear medium and still cast all your abilities and your spells. Um, and you can get more imbued dice out of, out of War Priest. The other problem, too, is using Fey Dark Illusionist. So, my question is how much Dark Apostate do you need? Because you can probably swap around a few things. Oh, that's only if you don't care about your any, like, the aura, right? So the aura is an arcane spell, so it experiences arcane spell failure. So if you don't have this ability and you wear anything higher than light armor, your character is going to experience arcane spell failure on your Eldritch Burst as well as your passive aura. If your passive aura doesn't go off due to arcane spell failure, you don't get your temporary hit points. Um, which is pretty bad. Yeah, you need to have you need to deal with the arcane spell failure as well. This is a doozy. How do we fix this? And then charisma to hit and damage is also here, and I wish there was an easier way to do that. Okay. Um okay. You also don't take prayer for free, but you take extra turns to get temp HP, which kind of makes sense. But like, this is a huge defense and offense. So that's a thing. Um, okay. All right. All right. I'm, I'm just looking. I'm scanning. I'm looking at stuff. 
Divine Crusader, interesting choice. You don't take the mantle. You take the dread mantle, but you don't take the good things that are dread mantle, like strike with fear and kick them while they're down. And you could take the good things like holy mantle, which gives the plus three hit damage with weapons, the plus one W, the massive defense boost. Um, okay. We can we can do some work here. There's some there's some ideas here that are interesting. So, let's say you want to keep with longsword. Um, I can I can see where you're going with that. This character benefits very greatly from offhand versatility, but you take it at sixteen or twenty four, whereas you can benefit from this at fifteen. And I think that's better than Improved Critical Slashing. Because Improved Critical Slashing is okay. Because, you know, you got Knight's Training, obviously. So it gives you a little bit more damage. But the offhand versatility is nice for some of your spell damage. But, of course, you can't crit on the extra added damage. Oh, and the leveling path. Um. Okay. You also take power attack, which is interesting. You also don't have quicken in this character build, so I don't know how you expect to cast spells in or out of combat. Favorite soul gives access to haste boost cheaper if you don't have access to Vistani knife fighting. So I really feel like you don't need that. Any earlier than epics? This was before U57, so I think I'd do War Domain instead. Yeah, I would probably just straight up drop the Favored Soul, which gives you access to War Domain, and then just spend the points in Vistani. You could do that if you could have four classes, but you can't. You probably could. Let's Let's figure that out. Let's figure that out. So, I want to do this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yep, scream at me all you want. Alright, so that's fine. Animal Domain, you're now War Domain. The War Domain actually gives you Holy Sword, which gives you a bunch of extra damage. You've got this, which is good. So you got the Improved Critical. You're doing the physical damage on top of the magical damage, which is nice. Do you need six Warlock is the question. Six Warlock gives you four second on the aura. The benefit of the aura, and this is actually something that I like a lot, is that you get to apply your imbue onto the aura as well. So the idea is that during the leveling process, early leveling process, you would use some of Dark Apostate, but not all of it. You're actually going to be instead because you take the Warlock, right? So you have the Warlock here. Effectively, once you get few, some of the first few levels, you want to be rushing as fast as possible up the Warlock tree to get Spiritual Retribution because this applies to both the Eldritch Burst and your Aura, and it'll just take the damage from Dark Apostate. So all this Apostate dice will apply to the Light, which is basically just better in all cases. There's no area where it's worse, and it's the same scaling, so it uses the same spell power, um, which is really nice. And, yeah, so, that, so, so that's good. That's good. Um, but what are, we, what, are we, what are we trimming here? Where we, we need to trim some stuff. We have 28 points spent in this tree, which is way too much. So let's do a little bit of uh, tweaking, shall we say. So a couple benefits that are really nice with this character. You're using the aura, so I think you want to keep this. You don't need shield because you can you can cast the spell from Warlock. So this is a waste of points. Uh, the charisma is kind of nice, but you can get charisma in other places. You probably want medium proficiency because that's kind of important. Also, this is only a two-pointer later on. So you can just leave that as a two-pointer. Depending on whether you want the scaling stats, so you get the extra MRR, PRR, and um, hit points, you could take more damage instead if you want. Also a fully flexible option. Additionally, you, instead of War Soul, you're using War Priest. Um, the benefit of War Priest is you can grab Divine Might here, and you still have more than enough points to go into Vistani, which I don't have set up here, and grab the action boost Haste. 
The difference is that obviously if you go to Vistani and grab the action boost haste, it doesn't feel as fun or nice because you know you're missing some other stuff and you have the you still have the point left. Whether you want to take Benediction for extra harm scaling, which is nice because your harm obviously heals for more now. Or you want to take Shadows of Death for the crit chance. I don't think you take Shadows of Death for the crit chance. I think the crit chance on your abilities is irrelevant. Um, also, I, I really think you should take the Prayer SLA because it's super duper insane mega good. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do one of these. Um, and one of these. So now your character has access to... The, again, this is what it's going to cost because it'll be a two-pointer. It's not going to be a three-pointer. It's a two-pointer after patch. So I would play this after update 56 and not before update 56. Um, you've got the two-pointer here. You've still got the War Priest, Divine Might. You just cast the shield spell, which lasts longer as a Warlock, so it's not annoying to maintain or keep up. Um, you've got Eldritch Burst. Uh, and this damage, the Spiritual Retribution damage, gets your damage dice from Dark Apostate, so it's literally just better Dark Apostate. But it also applies two Eldritch Burst, which you can use, and it also applies two... Um, there's, uh, with the, every four seconds from your aura and it skills additional dice in the future, which is very easy to pick up for this character. Um, Vistani is still fitting in here and then Fey Dark Illusionist. So what you lost is one point of charisma. What you gained is the, uh, medium armor proficiency as well as, um, Holy Sword, which is very impactful for the character moving into epics for some of the scaling damage later on. Additionally, I really don't like power attack. And I really like Quicken. Your character needs to move and attack. Um, and if you're moving and attacking, it's really, really, really nice um, to be able to attack and cast spells in between. I much prefer Quicken to power attack in all cases and all scenarios. And then by the time you have Maximize, you have Quicken and Maximize. So then you can Quicken and Maximize your um, Eldritch Burst, which is like pretty sweet. As far as pack, you pick Great Old One. I think it actually doesn't really matter which one you pick. So your full flexibility here. Uh, the rest of the feats seem pretty straightforward. Offhand versatility, double strike, blah, 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 blah. Harbinger of Chaos, probably not. Um, also, if you're going tier five of Divine Crusader, you basically need to take um, the, the law one. So there's that. Uh, this does Dark Apostate Dice. Sign of Ethereal Plane is nice. However, this is going to be the after the patch. Sign of Reboria, baby! So we're going to want to take Sign of Reboria because um, that one's going to be better. Um, there's got to be a better feat than Force of Personality. Honestly, probably a Spell Power feat here. Uh, but Force of Personality is not that bad. It's actually not that bad because you dropped the um, Favored Soul levels, so you lost some saves as well. Can't be undead and have a Pact. Uh, yes, that's a uh, 18th core. Uh, I wouldn't take Empower. If you're going to take something, go with Intensify. It's like Empower, but you get 140 mana. So it's like Empower, but you get mana too. So in Epics, I would always take Intensify. Um, but yeah, that's so you're getting so now you've got a little bit more damage, and your character has, hasn't really lost any tankiness. If anything, you've gained some tankiness from this. Uh, again, we're future proofing this for the next patch. So how do we future proof for the next patch? I think the answer is to focus on what you can add to your damage with your attacks and your Eldritch Burst and your passives and everything else that's coming out here. So how do we do that? Well, you really want to go here to Draconic to get Arcane Spell Sword because that's really nice. Um, plus, if you go Draconic, you can take the Mantle, which applies a bunch of damage with your aura that freely applies to monsters, which means you have freedom on your Mantles to really do whatever you want. And that's kind of cool because this Mantle can apply. Or alternatively, you can take Primal Avatar as well. And then you get this effect, Shared Mantle, which gives you plus three. Also, Mantle of Nature applies in your melee attacks, which you're going to be using constantly, which is way better. Reminder that the Eldritch, like the aura and stuff, won't count for the mantle, but because you're meleeing, it's actually quite good to use. Um, and then as far as the Divine Crusader stuff, uh, you won't be able to use the smites very well because your character is going to be healing from negative, so you're an undead, so this is not really useful. Um, Consecrate, again, not really good for this type of build because you don't really want to be healing yourself that much. Um, so we can focus in different directions instead. Either go the more spell-focused route uh, or go even a more melee-focused route. You could, if you wanted, go Dreadnought as your route instead. As an example, you have the action boost stuff, but your char and your character, you can get access to Displacement, you can get access to the Deer Fives. So I think we're going to step away from Divine Crusader for a second here. 
And again, this is going to be a post patch. So this is going to be in a future state where things are changed in the game. So ignore the fact that some of these things don't work now. I would not recommend playing this build now, considering how much better it gets in a patch. So where's our points here? Primal, 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 primal. Oh no, sorry, I'm looking for Draconic. Here it is. So you want to get, let's just say Acid, because you picked Acid. That makes the most sense to me. Um, grab Arcane Studies for the defense. Grab Dragon Hide so you no longer fail on a one. Draconic Heritage is good. Coalescence is nice. And then you grab Arcane Spell Sword. This is just one enhancement, so it doesn't matter which one you take. It's now just one thing that does everything. Plus, Elemental Blood is insane. Then we're going to go Primal Avatar. Pick up on Thorn because you did pick up the Acid Damage. This also works with Force. Uh, there's no negative in here, but this is the close you're going to get. Um, you can pick up the Epic Strikes because they're just honestly really good here and there's really no other better option because, damn, you know how good Shardstorm is? Which makes me think, I think this character is just a Primal Avatar. Which is kind of cool. Um, Which I, I kind of love that. But I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's just a Primal Avatar. Hey, so also, what's up, Grey Wolf? How are you doing? Is Dark and Beaman a Shadow Dancer going to be in Beaman post-patch? No, it's not. Um, But you want to get Shared Mantle on this build. Let's get up to Shared Mantle, Carrion Swarm. You've got spell-like ability or metamagic, so it's kind of good. Do you need Rejuve Cocoon? Honestly, no. Do you use Shrines? Nature's Friend could be helpful for uh, Acid Spell Power or something, but you're probably just going to use whatever one you have, so you can just use the extra Physical Magical Resistance rating if you're worried about staying alive. You can take the Nature of Mantle. Um, now Grow is just nice to get you up to this core up here, Weathering the Elements, which is a massive defense boost. So the more I'm pressing the buttons here, the more I want to just keep pressing the buttons into this tree. The thing is, you don't need DCs because DCs are a trap. Uh, you're not going to be casting offensive spells for DCs on monsters. You're instead basically just going to be um, meleeing, using your Eldritch Knight stuff, or the... Uh, uh, what do you, no, sorry, the sorcerer, the, the warlock stuff. If you wanted, you could take evocation, but you don't have to. But this leaves you a lot of points. So that means you could take Shardstorm. You can take the upgrade to Shardstorm. You could take the upgrade for Thorn. Because your character's going to be in melee, you're going to be doing this damage all the time. Also, Evergreen. So every time your mantle goes off, it gives you temporary spell points. You have an infinite amount of temporary spell points. Tons of metamagics. That's amazing. Um, I don't think this ability is actually good. But it is plus one spell DCs, so it's pretty good to take. Uh, extra health when you rest? I mean, how could you say no to that? Uh, reduce cost of quicken on all your spells. You can just leave this on while playing the game. Uh, mass frog, maybe? Depends on how you get your charisma. This is a hit or miss. Um, but plus to spell disease, again, hit or miss. Maybe you want that. But the form, oh, I'm invincible now form? Pretty good. Um, cheaper intensify if you want to leave intensify all on all the time. Elemental friend, again, something you can take. But now you have the option to go in a different direction um, for a little bit more damage in some cases. And my opinion, I would go with Dreadnought for two reasons. One, your character uses action boost, so you want to be able to pick up the extra action boost. The health, hit chance, and other stats are really, really useful. So you just pick up more health if you want to be tanky. You can get the extra stats while using an uh, action boost, and your character is pretty much always going to be action boosting with this build. So you can grab the extra action boost on stats, you can get the extra health. But most importantly, um, you can take Ghost Touch. This is not Ghost Touch. In the new patch, this is going to be an ability that it's called like Esoteric Touch or something, and it gives you one imbue dice. So now we're taking this and this, um, and you can just pick up, you got three points left. You can either pick up some more stats up here or just grab Double Strike because Double Strike's crazy for your build. And now your character gets three imbue dice here, three imbue dice here, one here for a total of seven in epics. Also really early. Um... And on top of that, your character also gets uh, so it's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you get 12 extra light damage of uh, dice on every attack on your in Eldritch Burst, on every on your um, your melees here. But wait, there's more on like every every four seconds on your aura. You also get the uh, what is this? 13, because Sign of Aurora is gonna do that. 14 enhanced elemental dice. So you've got 15 D6s that applies to basically everything that scales with your spell power, of which you're going to be scaling a lot of it. And this character basically only needs light spell power um, for their damage, uh, light spell power and acid. Um, I guess you could also take negative for poison as well. You have a lot of flexibility. This character can also use a bunch of weird, wacky item pieces that most people probably wouldn't use, such as uh, none of these. But 
uh, where where are you? Raid items. Pomora's Memento. Not Ring of Venom. Oh my god, what is the name of this ring? Please save me. It's the other ring from the raid. I'm not saying go raid. I'm just I'm trying I'm trying to find it. Spring Storms, Ethereal, Dustbone, Black Pearl. Memento of Mori. It's the last one on the list. Hilarious. Which gives sacred spell focus, but it's also got light, acid, and alignment spell powers, which is not only what you need, but conveniently altogether. There's also a sacred ground spell powers as well. So yeah. Um that is how I would change up the character. Does that look good? Does it seem good? Pretty being lawful and chaotic and taking embodiment feat, which grants plus two. Yeah, you could do that as well, actually. You could instead. Uh you can't. I is it both is it both embodiment, chaotic, and lawful that does that do that? I thought it was just the lawful one, but is it both of them? Lotil, do you know? If you have to be lawful, then you can't do um You can't do this. Oh, chaotic. Okay, yeah. So chaotic's perfect. So you do chaotic neutral instead. And then this becomes Harbinger of Chaos for sure. Um so it gives you a double strike and it gives you the dice. So now your character is at what did I say? 15 bonus dice for 16 damage, 16 dice total. So now you're at 17 bonus dice for 18 total on everything that you do. Um and again, that applies to your passive aura, it applies to your uh Eldritch Burst, it applies to your attacks, all your stuff. Um, and then you can just, if you want, look at this. Look at the filigrees you have set up. Boom, boom, reverberation. That's one already. That's an extra dice right there. I don't even have to change anything. It's right there. Damn, son. Anyway, uh, that's what I would change. That's what, in my opinion, Dark Apostate is better as a warlock.